Hello there. This is Concept Soup, PC Tech Channel. Oh yes, oh yes. Today, an informative video. This is going to be how to clean a PC. So you might have a PC in your room, in your office, that you've been using for many years, but you haven't been good to it. You haven't been keeping it clean, haven't been keeping it clean, keeping it keen. Or maybe you've picked up a used PC from somewhere like Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree, and it needs a bit of a touch up. This video is going to help guide you through how to clean a PC all the way through all the internal components to try and make it run really nicely. So this is one of our videos in conjunction with jcpccustoms.com. Of course, I am wearing the t-shirt, so it should be a dead giveaway. Um, so we'll have an ad spot, but I'm going to save that for the end of the video so that we can get straight into the content for you today. So we're going to be able to, have to clean a PC and then also how to keep it clean, what tools you're going to need, um, and how to keep the file system of your PC clean, um, as well as wiping a drive should you need to as well. So look forward to that. It's going to be a fun one to see on the other side. -da -da -da! So the first thing you're going to need is some personal protective equipment. Um, and this is just something as simple as a pair of gloves. Keeps all the dirt and allergens off your hands. If there's something greasy or mucky in there, it's nice to have some gloves on. Additionally, with this much dust here, I would certainly recommend wearing some kind of face covering, something like an N95 mask, you know, those blue surgical masks would be good. Just keeps all those particulates off your face. You're going to inhale less of it. I don't want to be responsible for any respiratory disease. So please keep yourself safe when you're doing any kind of work, especially if we're going to use any nasty chemicals. One of my favorite tools for cleaning out a PC is an air compressor. Um, and the one that I recommend is the IT Dusters Compu Cleaner. It's basically a big old hairdryer, basically, but it's got high static pressure and it's just pretty powerful motor really inside it it's got brush attachments on it all this kind of thing is going to make it really easy to clean the pc um, you can use cans of compressed air but really over time if you're going to keep a computer for a long time actually buying something like the compu cleaner actually is going to be better value because eventually you're going to spend more and more and more on these cans of compressed air and of course they're disposable not very good for the planet you're also going to need a roll of um, some kind of cloth so these are called like shop towels I think they're sort of not quite a towel not quite a paper towel they're sort of in between sort of like a thin cloth towel and that's going to help sort of wipe away any dirt so make sure you've got some of those very very cheap to pick these down um, pick these up at the pound shop absolutely no problem Next thing you're going to need is some glass cleaner. So this is optional if your glass is a bit dirty. It's just some generic glass cleaner. I've got Tesco glass cleaner here. I'm not affiliated with Tesco. I just happen to have this one. Um, and that's going to help clean any glass panels that are on the PC as well. Next thing I'd recommend you get is some isopropyl alcohol. Um, I use 99.9%, .9%, but really anything over 95% is fine. Because um, not only is this good for sort of disinfecting any really particularly gross parts of the PC, um, it's really good for removing any thermal paste if you want to also change the thermal paste on any of your components. We won't be covering that today, but it's a very useful thing to have around. Really, that's it. There's not much else you're going to need here. So let's get into what we're going to be doing to actually clean this goddamn thing. So, yes, here we are, back in our clip um, outside. And there's a good reason I've got the PC outside. Uh, that is because if we're going to be spraying dust everywhere, much better for you to be outside where that dust is just going to dissipate into the environment. If you do it in a closed-off bedroom, all you're doing is just recycling the same dust back into the same room, and you're not really doing a very good job of actually solving the problem. So certainly try and get outside if you can on a nice dry day. So of course in this case, uh, just to remove the glass, all we're doing is unscrewing the four um, screws on the panel. We're going to remove the panel, put that somewhere safe where it's not going to get scratched. And then we're just going to have a look around the system, see where all the dirt and dust is, and then we can give that a quick clean with the CompuCleaner Duster. So for blowing out dust from the case, I like to just start with, obviously with the glass panel off, just give me a quick once over all over the inside of the machine, just get rid of all the big bits of dust and it's all going to go flying everywhere, it's going to look very exciting. Then what you want to do is actually pull the front panel off your PC, so all, you know where the filtration part is or whatever the front panel is on, on your particular case. You want to try and remove that with whichever method your particular case uses. Um, and then what we're going to do is clean the front fans. So you can see as I pulled off this um, front filter on this case, there's loads of dust caked on there. So we're going to set that aside for a minute whilst we uh, clean the fans. So we're just going to go from top to bottom here. We're just going to hold the fan still and then brush around using the brush attachment on the CompuCleaner. 
The reason you want to hold the fan still is one because it makes it much easier to actually clean the individual blades but also it doesn't over spin the fan which could potentially damage the motor inside. So we'll just do the front three um, and then we'll move on to the next part. So the principle I like to follow with blowing any kind of dust out of a PC is that you want to try and push the dust back out from where it came because if you just blow the dust in the same direction you're kind of adding to the problem so you want to try and you know blow the dust outside of the case um, wherever possible there are some cases where you won't be able to do that um, but here you can see I've got the front panel and I'm blowing it back towards the front of the case just to try and push it back from the same way that it came now with the front filter like this you might not get it all off with just blowing it with the compu cleaner so we might need to give it a quick clean but we're going to cover that later on um, it's just to show you that sort of principle of trying to blow it back out the way that it came. Now the reason we blew into the case for the first slot is so that we can clean the exterior part of the fans there and we'll go back and blow the dust back out the front again by cleaning the interior part. So you can see here we're going through the case um, and then onto our front fans, again holding those fan blades still, brushing around, blowing all that dust away from them. Then we'll move on to the CPU cooler, in this case it's a tower cooler. Um, this is one of those situations where it's harder to blow it back against from where it came, but it is possible. So you just want to blow around the heatsink and around the fan. Um, if you want to, you can unclip the fan from the CPU cooler and clean that separately, um, but knowing these Arctic coolers, I they're really annoying to put those clips back on so I didn't really feel like it was worth it in this case but certainly could in yours if you wanted to. And then you can also move on to the, the other side of the case or the, the other side panel if you like where all the cables are stored because sometimes you'll get a bit of dust build up in there. You also want to look on the underside of the PC because the power supply can suck up quite a lot of dust um, especially if it's intaking from the ground so if there's a dust filter there remove that give it a quick brush as well blow some air through the power supply as well just loosen up any dust that's inside and at this point you may also want to um, remove your graphics card from the PC um, and you can do the same situation with the graphics card fans as well hold the blades still whilst you blow out all the dust from inside the fan blades I think it's actually a really good idea um, and that's because the graphics card can also suck up quite a lot of dust into itself as well so I'd certainly recommend doing that at the same time so you've actually done quite a good job of making this PC look uh, a lot nicer just by dusting it out. Um, but if you've got really stubborn dust on your PC, especially on the case components like the case panel or, or fans or that kind of thing, um, you might need to get a bit more aggressive with it. Um, and in this case, we're going to be using our old friend water. Now, it's always that thing where people say, don't put water near PC parts. And to a certain extent, I agree. So... There's no way I'd be taking the motherboard out of this PC and running it under a tap. Absolutely no chance. You've got a very high chance of damaging something if you don't know what you're doing. But things that are inert, if you like, that don't have any electrical signal going through them, like this front sort of case piece here, absolutely. Give them a run through with a soft sponge and some warm water. Get rid of all that dust. Just make sure that you really leave it for a long time to make sure it's bone dry before putting it back on your PC. So in this next section we're going to be cleaning the glass because as you noticed um, this customer trade-in uh, had a load of stickers on it. I really hate this trend of people putting stickers on their PC. I think it looks pretty gross. Um, so for that we're just going to use some glass cleaner and a towel. I didn't actually mention that you need a towel earlier. Sorry about that. Yeah, so chuck a towel down on, on sort of a table or a workbench or something um, and just make sure you've got your glass cleaner that we talked about earlier and your isopropyl alcohol ready. And for this chemicals are quite strong so you want to use the gloves that you see in the picture and make sure if you're inside that you open a window to allow some ventilation because this stuff can be quite noxious so be really careful. So what we're going to do is lay our glass panel down on the table here and make sure we put our gloves on um, and we're going to try and remove as many of these stickers as we can. So some actually will come off a bit easier than others. Some of them are very stubborn and it's going to take a lot to get them off. Luckily here with a bit of force I was able to pull them off so they all actually ended up being able to peel off but they did leave a horrible sticky residue behind. So if you've got like this sticky residue stuff here, um, the method that I use is actually grabbing a hairdryer, put it on sort of a medium setting, not on the hottest setting and try and just heat up all that adhesive, all the glue that's left behind from the sticker loosens it up and then what you want to do is get a tiny bit of your shop towel, a tiny bit of your cloth put a little bit of um, isopropyl alcohol on it and just gently rub away as that glass is nice and warm just to try and lift that um, adhesive off there. 
Now don't really bake the glass because you can actually break it um, so be really careful but a bit of gentle heat on sort of a medium setting if you're not overdoing it will be absolutely fine that's going to help remove some of that gunk. So once you've finished with the isopropyl alcohol lifting off all of that adhesive what I like to do is use the glass cleaner just to give it a bit more of sort of a smooth finish on the glass without all the drips on it. So just make the glass nice and wet probably three sprays will do it Use a new piece of cloth, just give it a nice firm wipe down to get rid of any excess grease. Um, and then with um, another piece of cloth, you can then dry it off if there's any residual parts. Then what you need to do is flip the glass over and repeat the process on the other side. It's no good having one nice piece of glass with the other piece looking absolutely rubbish. So you can see our end result here, and it's simple work with a simply beautiful result. As you can see, the PC is looking really nice and clean, looking a lot better than when we started, and physically the machine is in great shape. Other things that you can do to improve the longevity of your system and to give it a quick um, clean up is change the thermal paste on your CPU and the thermal paste on your video card as well. Now with the CPU, I'd probably recommend doing this every 18 months to two years. That should be absolutely sufficient. And for the graphics card, maybe every two to three years, it's a good idea to give it a fresh bit of thermal paste. Um, but it's not something you need to be doing every few months. In terms of generally giving the system a quick dust, I would say every two to three months is probably a good thing to do. Because if you keep the dust at bay early, you don't get all that really thick wet gunk that is built up onto the PC so if you keep on top of it it's not such a big job every single time. So that's the physical part of the PC but I did say I'd you know, show you a little bit about how to keep the PC clean software wise so say in this case like we did we had a customer trade-in we wanted to just completely wipe whatever storage drive was in there so for this we used mini tool partition wizard um, and that's a really nice piece of software because you can actually run it off a USB stick. Unfortunately, it's paid software. So if you can find a free version of some kind of bootable USB where you can wipe um, where you can wipe your drives, that's also really good. But I'm using Mini Tool Partition Wizard here, um, and we're just using a secure wiping method here just to get rid of any customer data that would have been on that um, storage drive. If you're not wanting to do this, obviously, you know, you don't want to have to wipe your storage drive every time you sort of give your PC a dust. There are other things you can do, so making sure you uninstall any apps that you're not using, checking out your startup tray in Task Manager, see what's in there that you don't really need to be having start up with Windows. Generally, keeping files off your PC that you aren't using um, is a really good way to keep on top of things. Other programs like Bleachbit are quite good uh, for getting rid of any temporary files and other things that might be clogging up your PC. But generally, it's up to you to practice good PC stewardship and keep everything really nice and clean. Now, another thing that's quite nice to do every now and again is check to see if there's any BIOS updates. So that's something we did here. I'm not going to cover the entire process because it is a bit different for every motherboard. But you can see here we're updating our motherboard BIOS on this MSI board, which will allow it to support Windows 11. So it's quite a nice little thing to do every now and again just to give your BIOS an update if there is one available. But again, this is something that's completely optional. So hopefully you've enjoyed that video. If you've got any more tips for us, um, I want to hear them down in the comments. Um, and I just want to see you. I want to see you, baby. I want to see you drop a like. I want to see you drop a comment. I want to see you drop a subscribe because that's what drives the channel. And I want you to check out jcpccustoms.com. Purveyors of fine gaming PCs. We've got an ad spot coming for that at the end. Also, we've got affiliate links to um, any of the items that you might need down in the description um, from amazon.co.uk. So there you go. I'm going to end there. Have a good night. Bye-bye now. This video is brought to you in partnership with jcpccustoms.com, purveyors of fine gaming PCs. But why buy from JCPC Customs? There are three pillars to what we do. Enthusiast-grade build quality, stunning good looks that you are proud to display, and all at a fair price. But how do you get your hands on one? We've got three methods. We have the ready-to-go PC section. These are PCs that are already built, ready to ship out with optimized specifications. So excellent for the most fuss-free experience. For those that want to spec out themselves, you can use our configurator listing. And this is where you can choose some lists of parts that we have available to us. But for the most granular experience, the truly custom experience, you can use our custom spec service. And this is where you fill out our Google form. You can choose every component, even down to the model number and any other accoutrements that you also want with the PC can be accommodated here. So thank you very much for watching and head to jcpccustoms.com to learn more.